So what we're going to look at here are two examples of what we can call biofuels. Those examples are ethanol and biogas. But before we get to biofuels, we're going to look at why we need biofuels. Well, basically, biofuels are a more environmentally friendly way for us to produce energy. Basically, we are, at this stage, we use oil, we use fossil fuels for almost all of our uh, for almost all of our energy production, and uh, at the moment we, fa we face a, a somewhat inevitable prospect of reaching this thing that we call peak oil. Now, peak oil is when uh, our society's oil extraction can no longer keep up with the increasing demand for oil that our society has. So when we talk about this oil extraction, we're talking about fossil fuels. So one day... You know, we have a limited supply of fossil fuels on our planet, and the way we're currently using fossil fuels means that we will run out of them uh, eventually. And so we need to turn to biofuels to look for other ways to uh, produce energy. So biofuels are uh, generally carbon neutral as their creation uses up carbon dioxide. Now, the reason that we can say this is because biofuels come from plants. So we know that plants sort of do the opposite to what humans do. Plants consume carbon dioxide and sort of produce or exhale, if you really want to make uh, compare them to humans, they produce oxygen. So if plants consume carbon dioxide to grow, we, and then we then burn those plants to produce any and therefore releasing carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide that we're releasing can be sort of considered uh, carbon neutral because we're only releasing the carbon dioxide that was uh, that we took away from the atmosphere in the uh, production of our plants. So sort of that cycle of uh, having carbon dioxide and then producing plants, which then release more carbon dioxide, which is then used to produce more plants, and so on, is a carbon neutral cycle. And so for that reason, we can call biofuels carbon neutral. Now, there are two, there are, we're going to look at two examples of biofuels in this video. So before we get to those biofuels, we'll look a bit closer at this cycle where plants produce carbon dioxide. So the reason that they can, they, so plants consume carbon dioxide in a process called photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is this, uh, this, this sort of process or this reaction that is common to all plants in, on, our, on our planet. So photosynthesis can be given or can be sort of described by this reaction here. So here we see carbon dioxide as one of the reactants, which means it's getting used up, which is a good thing for this 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 photo this uh, this plants and carbon dioxide cycle. And so, if we combine carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight, then what we end up is we produce glucose, which has the molecular formula of C six H twelve O six. Produce glucose, and we produce oxygen. So that is photosynthesis. That is the process that occurs in all plants. So that means in all our plants we're consuming carbon dioxide to produce this glucose stuff. Now what we can do with this glucose stuff is we can ferment it. Now this fermentation process is how we produce our fuel. So when we... so this happens naturally. Carbon dioxide is used to produce glucose naturally. And what we can then do is we can take our plant matter, we can take this glucose in our plant, and we can convert it to ethanol. So the way that we do that is we have our glucose here. And if we use some enzymes as catalysts, then what we end up with is ethanol. And we can then use our ethanol that we produce as our fuel. So this is the way in which our cycle is carbon neutral. So what we uh, carbon dioxide is absorbed from the atmosphere to produce glucose. A little bit of carbon dioxide is then released when we ferment our glucose, and then we obviously 
end up with this ethanol which we are burning to use as fuel and again that will release some carbon dioxide and so on the whole we are all of the carbon dioxide that we're releasing is only is the is the carbon dioxide that we absorbed in the production of our plant matter. So that makes this cycle that is uh, that uh, is used to produce ethanol in from plant matter are uh, carbon neutral. So this fermentation process uh, occurs. So we just have glucose, and all the all that's happening is the glucose is being acted on by enzymes, which convert the glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide. And so because there is no oxygen. Uh, in this process, there's no oxygen reacting. This uh, this ferment, uh, this this glucose is fermenting without the presence of oxygen. We can call the process anaerobic. So anaerobic means without the presence of oxygen. So this fermentation process can be referred to as anaerobic. So that's all the science behind the production of ethanol as a biofuel. Now let's take a little bit of a look at biogas. So biogas is slightly different. So this stuff is sort of slightly probably more relevant to the production of ethanol. So now we're going to look at biogas. Now biogas is produced through the uh, the natural decay of organic matter. So if we have maybe a compost, say in our compost bin, we are constantly producing biogas. As our compost decays, uh, it produces natural gases. And so these natural gases are carbon dioxide and methane. And so we can use carbon dioxide and methane as biofuels, or mainly methane, however, through decay of organic material. So biogas is produced through the decay of organic material. So that could be, you know, leaf and plant matter on the floor of a forest or, or sort of rubbish and other decomposing matter at a rubbish ship, for example. And so from that, we can produce biogas. Biogas is in fact produced naturally. It's more a matter of us collecting the biogas that's produced as those sorts of materials decay. And so biogas is approximately 50-50 uh, carbon dioxide and methane. And so we can use methane as a fuel the same way that we can burn ethanol as a fuel in order to produce energy. And obviously burning that methane is going to produce carbon dioxide. So this is uh, sort of this biogas is produced again from the it's from this is produced from the decay of plant matter. However, again, uh, the production of that plant matter requires the absorption of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is why this this biogas cycle is again has the same uh, same carbon neutral uh, cycle. So, plant matter is absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and then as it decays, it releases carbon dioxide and produces methane. And then when we burn methane, that releases more carbon dioxide. And in the end, we're only releasing the carbon dioxide that we absorbed in the production of the decaying plant matter. Now, so biogas or, or methane and ethanol can both be used as fuels. And the way that we do that is we combust these two substances. So what we're going to do now is look at how we can write two combust combustion equations for each of these biofuels. So biogas or methane and Ethanol are both examples of biofuels. So the first one that we will look at is ethanol. So we have here, if we write the uh, molecular formula for ethanol, it will be easier for us to write our equation. So if we have ethanol here in gaseous form, we know that combustion is a reaction with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So the first step that we can do is we balance the carbon. So here we have a carbon on each side. So that is all fine. However, because we've got an odd number of, uh, we've got only got one oxygen here, and we know that we are going to end up with an even number of oxygens here because we've got an O2 in our carbon dioxide. We need to put a two there and a two here. So that way we've got, we're, no matter what happens, we're gonna have an even number of oxygens on the left-hand side which is what we need on the right-hand side. So now I've got two carbons on each side. 
Now we've got 12 hydrogens here, which means we need to put a 6 here. Lastly, if we add up all the oxygens, we've got 4 oxygens there, plus 6 oxygens, gives a total of 10, which means we've got 2 oxygens here, and we need another 8 here, so we can chuck a 4 in front of our O2 here. So now, this equation is now balanced. We've got the same number of each type of element on each side of our arrow in the middle. Now, if we want to look at the combustion of methane, and again, we know that combustion is a reaction with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So this should probably be gaseous. And so what happens, we've got one carbon there, one carbon there. We can leave that this time because we don't have this single oxygen atom that we had up here in our ethanol. So we don't need to uh, do anything to this. So we can leave it as one carbon and one carbon. We've got four hydrogens there, which means that we need to put a two in front of that. And so now we have uh, an even number of oxygens on this side, which is what we want. So we've got a total of four oxygens on the right hand side, two there and two there. So if we put a 2 here, then we've got 4 oxygens altogether. So that is a combustion reaction for methane. So that's ethanol and biogas, and that is how they are considered carbon neutral as biofuels.